Welcome to our homestead and welcome to our garden. Today we're going to talk about the results of what our Johnson Sioux bioreactor has done over this past year. We're going to talk about the benefits and successes that I've had with it and then some challenges as well. Let's get going. So before I dive into the bioreactor itself and show you the results after one year, I want to talk about what type of compost is this? Because I think a lot of people are confused out there. This is not a fast composting process. A lot of people said that they can make compost in 18 days. And while that is true, it is not the type of compost that you need to heal soils. Those types of composts are bacterially dominant. This, on the other hand, is fungally dominated compost. This returns the soil biology to what it needs to be to thrive and not need to add a whole ton of amendments in the future. So this is an important point, don't miss this. The soils that are found in old growth forests, like the redwood forests of California, are almost completely fungally dominated. Those fungus are networks of communication between all the plant species there, which is very diverse. If I was to go into the hay field on my neighbor's property and take a sample of that soil, it would be almost completely dead. That is not a healthy soil. What we're trying to do is build a healthy soil. And to do that, you have to return the biology to the soil, not just the nutrients. And I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but let's take a look inside. So when we started off a year ago, we filled this with wood chips and leaves and a tiny bit of goat manure and just a few kitchen scraps. When we started, this was at the same level as this top air column in the middle. And you can see it's compressed by about one third. So over here next to the bioreactor is a static pile of leaves. I used these to fill the bioreactor. This is what I had left. I haven't touched this in a year either, and I'm gonna look down in the center of this one as well. So let's take this top cover off that I had set in here. Now you can see on top, it looks pretty much the same as when I put it in there. So as you can see, we've got like a cake layer effect going on here, and we've got some Material at the bottom that looks really wet. We've got this around the outside that looks really dry, but I know from checking it that in the interior is also moist. So on the exterior where the landscape fabric was, it is dried out, which is good. That means it's getting air through that landscape fabric. And we just did have two straight days of rain. So let's break into this pile and see what we have. As you can see, the ants are absolutely loving this. And obviously from the exterior, it looks like it hasn't done much, but let's look at the interior of this. Now you can see just coming in a little bit from the dry exterior, we've got a layer here that's looking really good. It's nice and moist still. And when I squeeze it, there's not much coming out, but it's holding together really well. You can see that. Now this portion certainly is not done breaking down, but it's well on its way. Let's get down into the interior, but more toward the bottom. So look, here near the bottom, this looks absolutely amazing, although it's still not completely broken down. The inner core here did keep a lot of air in this pile and it is so important to keep this pile aerobic and not anaerobic and we're going to talk about that more in depth in a second but let's take a look at what we've got here in the bottom and keep in mind this is extra wet because it just got done raining right before i walked out here but you can see when i squeeze it it doesn't release that much moisture it holds it really really well and it looks like this beautiful clay-like material, and this is what you want. I am extremely happy with how it looks down near the bottom, but as you can see, this pile needs more time. Now, I know you're thinking I could scrape off that bottom layer and use it, and while yes, that is true, here's why I don't wanna do that. You don't wanna disturb the fungal hyphae network that is inside of this type of compost. That's collectively called mycelium, and you can see a picture of it right here. And what that fungal hyphae network is doing is the more it matures, the more spores that it is putting out into your soil. 
And those spores are what's gonna be used as your inoculant for your garden. But you have to be patient. Every good thing you have to wait for, and this is one of them. And I know there's like 18 day composts out there, but they are not doing what this does, not even close. If you wanna make those for a quick shot on your plants that are already growing, that's great. But if you're truly trying to heal your soil, then you need to do something like this. Okay, here's the challenges that I've had with this is you're not supposed to let it get below 60 or 70% moisture and you're not supposed to let it freeze. Well, both of those things happen to this. And the only way to do that in most climates is to store it indoors and do this process indoors in a space that doesn't freeze at all or is slightly heated. And I see that as a big challenge for most people. But as you can see, mine sitting out here, it did freeze and I still have that beautiful soil, that clay-like texture at the bottom. But a huge benefit to this is the amount of work that it takes. Once you get everything in there initially, besides watering it and keeping that moisture level up, then there's really nothing that you have to do with it. So it's static. You're gonna save time, like with turning traditional compost piles, that takes a lot of effort and a lot of time. This, you set it and forget it, essentially, except for the watering. Now the watering was a challenge for us because you have to set up some sort of drip irrigation or be very, very religious about watering it all the time, and we weren't. So it, was devoid of moisture for some periods of time, especially during the drought we had here last summer. Now, the reason this took so long is I elected to not put a lot of nitrogen in it. Now you can play with the ratios and get this going a little bit faster than what mine is, but be very careful. If this goes anaerobic, then it ruins the entire thing. It kills off all of the fungus and it mostly is bacterially dominated. And then you're right back where you started with the other stuff. So when you wait for this, you are going to use much less in terms of the amount of this and making an extract from it. I think Dr. David Johnson got it to where he's using only two pounds per acre. And that's compared with hundreds of pounds of other types of compost or nutrient ads that you're putting onto an acre plot. So remember, the more green material you add to this, you run the risk of it going anaerobic. So too much water and too much green material at the beginning will completely negate what you're trying to do here. So for your small home gardeners, you're thinking, well, where the heck am I gonna keep this thing? If you have a small shed, you can put some in the back corner of that shed. You're not going to need much of it at all for your home garden. And remember, all those mycelium have a symbiotic relationship with the roots of your plants. They're working together to mine nutrients from the soil and to bring it back and forth and bring some from the plant into the soil like carbon sequestration. So you not only need the biology above the soil and the plants, but below the soil. So Dr. Johnson and his wife who developed this, they said something so profound. We spent a hundred years trying to create plants that will grow in poor soils. We spent hardly any time trying to repair the soil so that almost all the plants can grow in them. We have to focus on the soil, and that's a biblical lesson too if you're interested. The heart is the soil that you need to plant in, so that needs to be healed in order to plant good seeds in it. Let's take a look at this static pile of leaves. Now, I haven't touched this at all. You can see it's not undisturbed here on the top. Let's go down into the center and see what we've got. Definitely toward the bottom that is breaking down really nice. So I'm down here at the bottom and you can see there is good decomposition of this material, but it's nowhere near like what we have in the bioreactor. Now I don't have the money to do a full biological analysis on it. I think those tests are like $800 and I don't have a microscope and I'm, I'm not a scientist, but I trust what I've learned about this and the consistency of what I found at the bottom of this. That clay-like consistency that just holds water, holds on to everything, and is full, I'm sure, of all of those spores that we need to inoculate the soil. Now, one of the last challenges I had was keeping the worms inside. So if you don't keep it from freezing, the worms aren't gonna stay. They're gonna wiggle out through the bottom and drop into the ground and get out of there. So even if you do put worms in this and it's getting too cold for them, 
they're gonna bail. And conversely, if you put too much nitrogen in here and you get the temperature too high and it goes anaerobic, that's gonna kill off the worms as well. Worms thrive in the soil that's like between 80 and 90 degrees. So that's why you shouldn't add the worms to this until after about the first week when the temperature drops and that thermophilic process ends. But you're gonna have to monitor yours per what ingredients you put in it. I elected, like I said, to not really put hardly any nitrogen in here and just to let it, the carbons do their work. So I'm gonna wrap this back up and wait some more for it to do the process that it is meant to do, just like in nature, just like in an old growth forest. And in the future, I will do some experiments on our garden with taking the extract from this and adding it and then having a control where I just do the conventional composting method. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go click this video right here, which is the video on our original build of the bioreactor. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.